Notion tips and tricks. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a project risk register in Notion. A risk register is a tool project managers use to track and monitor the risks that could impact their project. This tutorial is also good if you want to understand a bit more about relations and roll-ups in databases. So let's jump into my Notion and see what the end product looks like. Here is the finished risk register. It has an ID and description column and then a column where you select the probability the risk will occur and a column where you select the impact on the project if it does occur. Then here, the overall risk is automatically calculated. This tutorial shows you how to set this up. So as you can see, four risks have already been added to the database and I'll add another. So potential risk number five is that the budget may be cut. Next, I'm going to select how likely it is that this will happen and I'm going to select unlikely. Then I have to select the impact on the project if the budget is cut. And for that, I'm going to select major. And here you can see that the risk has automatically been set to medium. Before I show you how to set up the risk database in Notion, I'll explain a bit more about how risk scores are calculated. Here is a risk matrix. And you can see from here that if you have a likely probability and a minor impact, then the risk comes out as medium. Whereas if you have a very likely probability and an extensive impact on the project, then the risk is high. And to automatically calculate this, we give each probability and impact level a score. These scores are then multiplied together, which gives you the risk level. So you can see that the multiplied scores here, everything 15 and above is a high risk. Medium risk is scores between eight and 12 and low risk is between one and six. So let's put all this theory into a Notion database. Start by creating an inline database for the probability scores. And instead of the tags property, change this to a number type and call it scores. Add two more rows and then add the probability levels and give them a score between five and one. Then you do exactly the same to create an impact score table. Five entries with the scores one to five. I also like to open up each entry and give it a relevant icon. So I'm going to put a red blob for the very likely option and a green blob for highly unlikely, etc. And now to create the main risk register table. So you create an inline database called risk register edit the title property and rename it to ID, change the tags property to text and call it risk description. Next, add a new property called probability. And this is a relation linking to the probability scores database. Add another relation property, this time linking to the impact scores database and call it impact. And so now you can see that in these relation columns, I can select an option from the probability and impact databases. Now add another property, calling it probability score. And this is a roll up that uses the probability relation to bring through the probability score. And do exactly the same for impact. Create a roll-up property that links to the impact score via the impact relation. It's not obvious when you look at the table, but these scores have been brought through into the risk register as text fields instead of numbers. 
This will cause problems later when we come to multiply them together. To get around this problem, edit the property and in the Calculate drop-down, select Min. This gets the minimum score selected, but as we're only going to pick one score, this will just bring back the score as a number. Then do the same for the Impact Score property. And now to create the overall risk score. Add a new property called Risk Score and select the type as a formula. The formula simply multiplies the probability score by the impact score. And finally, add the risk property. This is going to be a formula and you want the formula to say that if the risk score is zero, then put nothing. If the risk score is less than or equal to six, then put a green circle and low. If the risk score is greater than or equal to 15, put a red circle and high. Otherwise, put a yellow circle and medium. Quite a simple formula and it creates the overall risk score. Let's test that this works. I'll select unlikely probability and no impact. And you can see that the calculated risk is low. Try another one, this time possible and medium impact. And the risk is set to medium. And that's it. I'm just going to hide the score columns and add a mitigation, owner and close properties to complete the risk register database. And it's ready to use. The advantage of using this method is that you can edit the probability and impact scores to change the risk without having to edit a long, complicated nested if formula. I'll put a link in the description below to this video's blog post where you can copy and paste the formulas from the tutorial. I'll also add a link to a risk register template that you can duplicate into your Notion workspace.